favorite guitar players like since 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 i bought this one man <laughs> tactiles yeah thanks yeah. yeah it was in vienna i don't know we, we met actually on that concert like, you probably won't remember uh with josh roseman you played in porgy oh, and bass yeah so yeah i remember playing with porgy at porgy and bass yep. yeah yeah it's like 17 16 years ago and <laughs> i put the, put that cd on in the car when we still had cds in the cars and i was just like what <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. completely blew my mind and uh, awesome thanks yeah and i just wanted to ask you first start with uh, i've heard that you have like this new trio stuff out water walkers uh. and i listened to it and i was quite surprised because it's a trio with damien and stefan crump and uh yeah i wanted to ask you is this like going to be like a larger record of a, or uh is it just like an ep or uh, it was it was going to be a full record <clears throat> and we went in <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we went, <laughs> we went to the studio um, in between, you know, being on the road with different people and things like that. And, uh, you know, it was sometimes when you go in the studio, you, you get started kind of late in the day. And then we just yeah. didn't get everything. We didn't get everything, you know. So uh, the oh. four tracks that are on the EP were what, were what we got. And then I, I intended to go back in, but then we didn't get a chance to go back in. And then every, and then... Oh the pandemic hit and <clears throat> Damien decided to go to LA for a little while. Yeah. We came out here. And so, um, we don't know when we're going to get back to New York and to be in the studio again. Yeah. And at the same time, Pi recordings was doing this like EP series, a digital only thing. And, oh, okay. and the music, it goes only to the artists and then, or the artists could donate it to black lives matter or something like that. Yeah. But so, Seth at Pi was saying, <clears throat> what about your trio thing? I know it's not finished, but maybe you want to just do an EP and whatever. So I, I, I realized that was, a, <clears throat> man, whatever's there doesn't really come out. <laughs> I realized that that was a good idea. You know, I said, yeah. well, this way I don't have to be stressed out about finishing it. And we'll just do a trio record and, you know, we'll get around to it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. but yeah, originally it was going to be a full length record. But, uh, oh, wow. I'm also quite surprised you did the I Wish I Knew. Like, oh, yeah. Well, it's so beautiful, man, what you played. Like, really. Well, thank you, man. You know, I, I, um, you know, all of my records have been so like conceptual with yeah. like, like larger bands and composery and this whole thing. And I think that I've, I've, I've always wanted to be respected in that way, you know, because of who I, who I grew up admiring. And yeah. I always feel like, you know, being a composer and, leaving sort of uh, your own bit of a catalog of material is what you're supposed to do. You know, like that, that was what I always, yeah. but well, you, you do. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. And, I, and I'm going to keep doing that. But I, but I also felt like I wasn't really paying attention to just like the guitar okay. as an instrument, like as a rec, you know, like I, I felt yeah. like, why don't I do also trio music at this point where I can just focus more on playing guitar and even play some standards, you know, which, which, I don't usually do, but, but yeah, you know, yeah. in the trio format, you know, it just seems like, well, why not? And I just, you know, yeah, maybe, it sounds awesome. Really? Thank you. Yeah. So I don't know. That's why I just want to maybe, maybe, maybe just bring in some guitar heads who are wanting that. I don't know. You know, I mean, I yeah. like, I wouldn't do anything if I didn't want to, but, but I just felt like there's a, there, the guitar jazz guitar world is a little funny. And there are some people who, you know, they want to hear you just play standards and this whole yeah. thing. And it's a little rigid and I, I don't I don't like that. But at the same time I'm like, well, okay, let me you know, maybe you'll like this. I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, no. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's so amazing because you play differently, you know, you approach it from such a different angle as well. Right. Well, I'm trying to play more just like full guitar harmony stuff. Yeah, know? yeah. It's it's a it's a different kind of writing because I don't generally write that way for myself. Yeah. My yeah. Own music, so 
you know, and I guess so I get to get into my old, you know, when I was listening a lot to like Joe Pass and Bill Evans and stuff like that, you know, yeah. or West Montgomery, like real, you know, yeah. that part of my background, which, which, you know, I should really go back to because, <laughs> you know, it makes me a better player when I listen to those guys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but it, it's amazing because, you, you know, I've been such a fan of the Sixtet, like uh, Radiate and Less Desert. And, uh, Thanks, man. It, it's it's so fresh like everything you do like compositionally for me like for me are like top five composers out there like especially on, on, on guitar because you know the guitar world like you said it's modern jazz guitar it's like it gets really boring sometimes if you know what i mean i, it, I don't know what you mean i i i uh <clears throat> i guess you know we got to this place where where um there's a lot of really talented shredding kind of guitar player. Yeah. And so a lot of the music is written to sort of emphasize that. Yeah. And, you know, there, that has a place, but I think if you do entire records like that, it becomes kind of monochromatic, yeah. uh, which isn't even the best way to put it, but you know what I mean? It's uh, just like, I know like what a, you mean. Yeah. it's a little static, you know, it's just like, it's, uh, and so it kind of doesn't always, take in those kind of most important parts of composing, which are like, well, what is the tension in the release mm. or the counterpoint yeah. of the entire record? You know, not just yeah. one, not just within one piece of music, but what is the whole outlay? The whole story, yeah. Right, and how are you writing for the other players and how much, uh, how much diversity are you using in your composition, you know, in terms of like timbre and the yeah. what, can, what can these instruments do and all that kind of stuff. And I think very much uh, a lot of younger writers are just writing like this is a really hip rhythm and this melody and then we're going to blow yeah, yeah exactly and, yeah you know i like that on one tune but then i want to okay so now what are you going to do you know and yeah it's not so easy you know but i've been i've no. been very much yeah. like henry for 20 years and yeah uh and all these other people that i've played with who yeah. take approaches you know i've had a lot of exposure to interesting ideas different so music, i bring that yeah. in to my own perspective and it helps me have ideas about what to do that might be interesting you know yeah. so yeah, yeah it's not so easy to to do for everyone so you know i yeah but well, it, it's <laughs> i mean the, the, you, you have uh, you seem to have this idea that you you do right for the band like i um, mean this uh, w when did the success start working actually like eight years ago already like this lineup is basically the same now for a long time right Right. Well, yeah. Radiate. We did. Um, I, I wish I had fifteen or something. I think. Um, when we did, I can't, well, Ophigus Butterfly was the was the before that with the four. Yeah. We did have Shim and and also Gerald Cleaver was on that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean that that um, that record, I guess, came out in two thousand six. Ophigus Butterfly, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This is quite because a while. This one is this <laughs> one is two two three. So. Yeah, two six, the so, butterfly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you know that was basically um, that was when it started. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to get into a little bit of a larger format because uh, even though I had Osby and Shim on tactiles, mm -hmm. that was yeah. more wing kind of record. Um, it, it had, I mean, it's got some little nuggets in there, but compositionally, but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Man. No, like, I, I mean, I, I like yeah. the music. I, I, it definitely yeah. has tunes, but it, but it. it it didn't, I didn't, you know, I hadn't learned as much yet from. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Since I did in 2006, I kind of went in another direction. Um, and yeah, I wanted to use Jose. I really wanted Jose's sound in there. You know, the two. You, you, you met Jose from uh, Henry's band, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. We started playing in like the end of 99. Oh, wow. Of 2000. Already, yeah. When we started with Zuid. Yeah. And, uh, and so. By the time I got to 2006 with Ophiuchus, I really wanted to write for the tuba because I just loved playing with him so much, you know. So yeah, so that was why that was basically okay. the very first thought: like, how am I going to integrate tuba into this band? You know, and then uh, and then I realized yeah. I wanted to have the two horn thing, and I wanted to figure out how to do that. And then so that that was the next record when I did Radiate. I wanted to have yeah, you know, uh, Steve on there with uh with finlayson yeah with jonathan yeah anyway 
so that 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 that's the deal I, I, so so it was more about like figuring out the people that that had the the instruments with the range i wanted and then and, and then how yeah. we how we integrated together because it's also about what they do with their own music yeah and it's kind of all, all connected like a large family like i see yeah. the musicians you play with yeah 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 exactly so it's, it's all interconnected yeah exactly so it's not necessarily about like using stars or whatever you know but they yeah. have you know they happen to be pretty well known but it's just like it really is about their approach to music which helps me which helps us understand each other and also to be honest you know sometimes you do something and it's not working and when you work with people who are friends you know they go hey what if we change this or you know yeah or, hard time soloing over this section you know it's not going yeah. anywhere or it's going to yeah. you know what i mean and it's so yeah. tell where sometimes when you write for you know if you do a session where you have stars come in or whatever uh then it's more like the tunes have to be simpler because you can't rehearse much and then you just have to get it and so it's more about the solos and then it's like you know or they're not going to say anything to you because they're getting paid and so they'll just say and then they leave yeah. <laughs> music you can tell there's a lot of records like that where it's like oh i'm gonna yeah. get so to play on it and it just kind of sounds like a blowing session and it's like i mean you know i like to listen to people blow all the you know but yeah, yeah sure. but i mean it's like okay now what right you know yeah yeah, yeah sure what else can i listen to you know it's like yeah no, definitely you know i mean I, I wish i could see them live more now you know like that's it's a different i think i think listening to people kind of take long-winded solos is, is really fun live <laughs> yeah i agree yeah uh, on the record you know it's like there has to be more to it right and yeah, i mean there's a lot of great records being made so i don't want to say i don't know i like a lot of stuff but I, but but I, i'm just agreeing with you in terms of the cert, there's a certain kind of history uh that like jazz guitar players don't always embrace when it comes to composing you know it's yeah 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 i don't Definitely. know I mean, no, no, no I, you know, I studied literature, so for me, it's always about stories. You know, it's like, uh, and it, it's like you put it on a record, and it has to be like fifty minutes or si whatever, sixty of a story. That you know, it's every song is like a chapter, and yeah. if it's not there, then it, it gets boring. You know, if it's every song, it's like, you know, solo, bass solo, drum solo, and it's like, yeah, okay, I've heard that on the first two, and now I'm, <laughs> it's enough. You know, so. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because if you do classical music and modern com composers and stuff like that, um, they're like I said before. I mean, they they have all these different ways to get things out of to get these different sonorities and textures yeah. and over and all these things. You know, dynamics. How, how <laughs> what's the range? Is it high? Is it low? Is it soft? Is it loud? You know, what does this instrument sound like? And then what does yeah. the room? Where the instrument is can you work that a little bit um and those things give it's like a gift you know if you if you embrace those aspects of music then yeah. you, you can add so many more ideas to your pieces and oh, yeah. and then once you start doing it's like why wouldn't you do that you know i remember reading an interview with apex twin you know apex twin yeah, uh, yeah sure <laughs> he was talking about and he was being funny like uh it was either him or chris clark i think it was apex twin but either one of them was saying like, oh, well, you know, once you start making music with computers, you know, why would you use instruments, you know, because you can yes. do so much. And I think it was being tongue, tongue in cheek, you know, but it's the same thing with composition. It's like once you start doing certain types of things, yeah. you realize like, well, I should really be always doing this. You know, I should yeah. always be exploring this. And why would I limit myself? Right. So the one thing about your composing, like, I mean, so many of your tunes are like, based on grooves or longer forms which then kind of go into other stories within a song right. and then you add all these layers yeah i just wanted to ask you how, how how do you start a composition like is it the first do you start like with a groove and then you expand it and then or you know how does this go with you like well it's not always the same um but uh hopefully hopefully i start with some kind of a melody you know uh okay. where I usually get what we call earworm, you know, I don't yeah. know, right? But like, yeah, yeah. It'll happen uh, where I'm just sort of if I'm in that space and and I and I write in 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 phases. Like I'm not always writing. Uh, I kind of wish I was because I would write more music. But but I get into if I'm busy in someone else's band or if I'm yeah sure. mixing music or doing the studio stuff. I don't I can't just like steal a little bit of composing. So when I'm writing, I have to really be in that mode. But when I am in that mode. 
uh, I, different ideas will come to me, you know, and uh, yeah. either I improvise on the guitar and try to find pieces of things, you know, or sometimes there'll be a chord that I really like or, or it'll be based on a rhythm. Yeah. But, but, but I, I don't have a, one certain way to do that. But once I have the idea, um, so say I do have a rhythm or a bass line or something that I like, um, and it might be a small piece, I will uh, record myself playing it and and then I will try to improvise using that to, and try to just in you know and then there's those compositional things like well I'll turn yeah. it up or down or I'll play it backwards or I'll I'll make it twice as slow or I'll make it twice as fast and I'll yeah. try these different things to see if if I can make it better and then a lot of times what happens is that then I start putting it into Sibelius I use Sibelius yeah yeah me too and so I put it in there um, and then I use my I use, mostly I'll use my guitar and I'll just sit there and then I'll just write the put it into Sibelius. Oh, okay. um, that's how I do it. And then um, what will happen is, is that like, I'll start writing more bars, you know, so I'll try to expand it. And oftentimes I'll just write like it's going to be through composed. So I'm, yeah. not about, like, I'm not worried about it being four bars or eight bars or five bars. I just yeah. keep. And then there, then I'll notice that there are pieces that are really strong. So maybe the original idea I had was okay, but now I've gotten to bar seven. And something really interesting happened there, you know. So okay. I'm willing to throw away everything that happened. Oh, wow, okay. So it's sort of like, you know, I, I, I try not to um, overcommit to any of the ideas, you know. So, yeah. so there, you know, uh, I tell people a lot that with Henry, you know, uh, Zuid has rehearsed so much music, more, much more music than we've actually recorded or performed live, you know, because Henry is very prolific and he writes all the time. Yeah. And so he'll come in and we'll rehearse a piece of music and I'll think it's incredible. And he'll be like, yeah, that's okay. And then we'll never hear it. You know, <laughs> oh my God. And it's like, what, what happened to all this music, man? You know, like why, you know, he's just like, oh, I have this other idea now. And it's incredible, but it, but it, but it's healthy because, you know, just because it came out of your head doesn't mean you have to keep it or yeah, it, it's yeah. never finished, you know, it doesn't yeah. finished. So like, uh, the, yeah. you can write the music and re perform it. And then you can say, uh, I still feel like we're missing a section, you know. So then the next time you play it, I'll write another section, or maybe. Oh, yeah, or yeah maybe that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, so you do revision the tune, like you get it to the rehearsal and then change it and. Always. Yeah, okay. On Last Desert, um, there was a, I can't remember the name of the piece now, but one where it features Finlayson solo, mm -hmm. and I had to write a whole new section for him because uh, I had him soloing over this one piece, and it just. Uh, after what had come before, it was a different part of the music, but it still it didn't open up. It was really tight, yeah. and, um, and so actually, it's not even on the record, as a matter of fact, because because uh, by the, we did the recording and then we had co concerts after that, and so mm -hmm. I wrote a new, new part of the music. And I even before the the record was even finished, I tried to take a live version of that solo section and mix it into the record <laughs> oh wow man seriously wow that's amazing <laughs> it almost worked but like it just wasn't the sound of like yeah you know, i would have said hey this is like a kind of a studio edit thing but it actually worked musically but sonically it was just yeah. a little too different it was just a little too different yeah. and i didn't want to go for that vibe you know because it's still it's still supposed to feel live you know like a real yeah and so I didn't want to go that far, but I tried, you know, because this whole other section is really hip, and I and, it, and so it's not even on the record. But the be yeah. it's better now than it was, you know. So yeah, uh, so I'll always do that. And um, but but anyway, so the thing is, I I could, so then so say I do have something that I really like. So say I got to that seventh bar and I threw away other stuff, but then I'm like, well, this is really where something cool is happening. And then I'll then I'll try to expand that. And then once I get to a place where I like that, then I might go into Pro Tools. And and start doing a mock-up. So I'll use. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I'll like actually use really nice. I have a really great sample library, and I'll actually get a tuba sound and the saxophone, and I'll make it sound. Oh cause, wow, okay. Because I find it um, much more interesting to be creative that way, because the built-in sounds with Sibelius are not that great. And then nah, yeah, yeah. using software since and samplers with Sibelius is very clunky. So it's much easier to do it in Pro Tools, you know. So, yeah. so go in there, and then I'll do mock-ups, and then I'll create more even from there, you know. Oh, now, yeah. doing the sextet because um, I find it helpful to really hear something that sounds like 
like an approximation of what I'm going to hear. Yeah. And uh, when I'm doing something more like a jet, like a jazz, just like a straight tune, like the pieces that I wrote for the the trio, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to do that because it's just going to be guitar anyway. Less space, yeah. I mean, more space. Yeah. I, don't to, yeah. I don't need to go into Pro Tools and do something like that. So then with that, I just use Sibelius, and I'll, and I'll just write it all on the guitar Yeah. And, and just punch the notes in like that, you know. So, yeah. um, but with the sextet, I like to hear more, you know, and, and that's, yeah. that's what I'll do, you know. So, but, yeah. uh, but, that's so cool. but again, it's like just, so say if I have a, a rhythm, then I'll try to see, you know, I'll, I'll play with that rhythm and I'll write you. If it's if it's a rhythm, I'll often write it. It'll be for either a rhythm section, like a guitar part or a bass line. Bass, yeah. And it'll be something like, OK, is this something where the bass and the and guitar are interacting or are we playing different things? And then how does the tuba fit? You know, and I'll, and I'll yeah. sort of build a foundation like, on that. And okay. then and then I'll put the melody on if I've started yeah. Or if I have this melody, I want to figure out what I want the feeling of that melody to be because the, the melody could be something that is uh, more open and relaxed, or it could be this kind of more interlocking rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As melody. So depending on what what kind of piece of music it's going to be it depends on how I'm going to fill it out. Yeah, but it is a lot of intuition. You know, I don't have a formula for it. So yeah, yeah sure. With, I have to go with what I'm hearing. And just give in to the time that it takes to find a natural thing. And sometimes that means wasting time and other times other times it comes quickly. It just Yeah. Just depends, you know. But I don't have a um yeah, I don't have you know, Henry, like for example, Henry, he has a system for composing where it's much more like a classical composer and you know Yeah, I, I will I will I will ask you about Henry, man, because um, Yeah, yeah, you know, so Yeah. I just wanna know about yeah. one, one one tune, Liberty, the, the rhinocerisms. Oh, you know, what about? Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, you know, I, I try to analyze. You know, I, I try. I, I compose quite a lot of music, and I listen to music, and you know, yeah. that's how you learn that you analyze tunes. Sure. Uh, you know, like th this one, I did like a lot. It was way easier, easier. You know, yeah. in brackets, well, but like to, the more straight ahead kind of writing. Yeah, it's still, it's really advanced and modern. You know, rhythmically and. But like on this tune, man, <laughs> I I I kind of figured it out, and then like around the third minute, Damian starts to playing <laughs> plates, and I have no idea what you did. Whether this is composed there, I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about. But like, that's that's the part where the rhythm, uh, it's it's before the guitar solo, right? So it goes yeah, bum, bum, yeah. Bum. It's, it's a it's a structure, but I kind of lose tempo uh, or everything. What happens there? Right. Well, you know, I could probably I could send you that chart and you can see what's happening. Oh, can can you please do that seriously? Sure, oh, please. But you know, the the the, the uh, that's one of those things where I wanted to have the spacious kind of rhythm, and so I had the the harmony part. It's these hits that happen together. Yeah. Boom. Uh, ee, oh, ee, right, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a it's a unison rhythm. But um, actually, Damien, what he's playing was his idea. Uh, we were listening to it and trying to figure it out. And he had actually he and Stefan uh, had rehearsed by themselves. Uh, oh, okay. On a couple of pieces that they wanted to do, and he came up with that rhythm during that. So he told me, he's like, "Oh man, you got to hear what I did." On this <laughs> oh, yeah, it's sick. And so, so I had written the piece, but um, but he came up with that feel uh, on the drums. And so when I heard, I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> like it was totally different than what I was expecting, and it was great. I was like, "This is perfect, man!" And it, you yeah. know, and again, another reason to work with people that you are friends yeah. with is they're willing to put in the time. Yeah, I didn't ask. But, you know. How did you manage to stay in time? On the <laughs> I knew that I, when you know the, when you know the material. Yeah, and then it's, you get to practice it. It's yeah. just like anything. It's it's like I think a lot of people think stuff is mysterious, and then when you actually see it and play it, and then you say, "Oh no, no, do it like this," then it's like, "Oh, okay, that's what it okay. is." But again, yeah. because it's because. Um, it's because what is written there is not typical. <laughs> yeah. That 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 it it 
it's mysterious because you're not following some kind of pattern. Yeah. But really, that's only like a six or eight bar thing that repeats. Structure, yeah, yeah. But it's really not that complicated. Um, no, yeah. But, but yes, but, but definitely what Damien played there made it mysterious. And, and make it, it easy, yeah. The whole thing was about it being this open, This it, it's it's metronomically accurate, but it's it feels like this big cushion. <laughs> and it's like very laid back in this way. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a super fun way. Uh, but and that's what I wanted. But like, but like I said, yeah, I didn't compose what he played. And then, um, and then, it, and then it just we finally work up to this open thing that goes yeah. to to the guitar solo, which changes and the last section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I it's like, just it's a wind up, you know. Yeah. No, it's just this mid section. I, I listened to it so many times, and I was like. <laughs> What? It's, it's like, you know, someone is like, whoops, breaks yeah. down. It's like, yeah. damn, man, you know, it's yeah. incre incredible when stuff. When right? you see the chart, you're going to be like, oh, that's all it is? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll still have problems. Probably right, few, right. Well, the time is, is still mysterious. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But you'll, no, you'll like, amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to liberty ask you about, you mentioned Henry so many times. Or, I mean, I, I've been such a huge fan of, you know, his composition for, for years. So, Already the stuff, you know, with Brandon Ross in the 90s, and I love that stuff. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, how did you get involved first with Henry in the beginning? Like, it's a good story. Um, so I used to work as a marketing person for Blue Note Records. <clears throat> oh, really? Oh, wow. And that was when I first moved to New York. Well, I'm originally from New York, but when I came back to New York in 1999, uh, I think it was 1990, the end of 98 or the beginning of mm -hmm. 99. And um, that's what it was. I came at the end of 98 because they were playing 1999 at Times Square on New Year's Eve. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was living right near Times Square at that time. Anyway, so I, I got a job in, mar in the marketing department of Blue Note Records. And this was, you know, I was starting to gig in town, but I hadn't really started to just have, play music for a living. Yeah. And, I, um, the head of A&R at the time was a guy named Brian Bacchus. And if you look him up, he's done tons of production for, for many years in different, uh, for different labels. Yeah. And, uh, he and I, the way, uh, when we first met. And so shortly after I started working there and meeting with him, I got a regular gig for my trio actually at, um, at this place called CL Rouge. And I would play there every Tuesday. And I had that gig for two years and a lot of people would come through there all the time. Um, lots of lots of great musicians. And so Brian and I used to live near each other in Brooklyn. And um, after one of the trio gigs, we shared a cab ride home. And he was asking me who I wanted to play with. You know, he's like, "So what do you want to do now? You know, who are you going to play with? What do you want to do?" And, and I had played a little bit with Greg Osby at that point, yeah. and I, Steve Coleman a little bit, and some other people. And the first name that came to my head, I said, "Oh, you know, Henry Threadgill would be." amazing person to work with you know he's like henry he's like oh man i know henry and so he just calls henry right then in the cab and he's like henry and henry answers the phone and he's like yeah i'm with this guitar player and he's really good you should hear him he wants to play with you and henry's like oh yeah <laughs> like, yeah oh, my. so henry literally came to see my trio at this at my gig the next tuesday like one week later he came you know and that's the kind of guy it's a testament to the kind of guy henry is because yeah. not everybody would do that you know People, you know, but Henry's like one of those guys, and you can tell by his music, he's very curious. Yeah. And so he, he, in his mind, he's like, well, if this guy's interested in me, I should come and hear, see what he's doing. And if Brian says so, because Brian was a respected yeah. friend, of, he's a friend, you know, they were friends, which I didn't really know that, but I should have known that, but I didn't. Yeah. So, so Henry came, and then, uh, and that was cool. We got to talking and everything, and then, and then I was like, wow, check that out, you know, and then, and then, uh, one month later, he called me and said, "Hey, I'm I'm putting together this band. Do you want to play? You know, oh, wow. it's the beginning of Zooid. And yeah. luckily for me, um, there's a pipa. You know, the instrument pipa, the Chinese instrument. No, so, no. so he had actually called Ming Xiao Fen, who's like kind of a famous improviser on the pipa, to be in the band originally, or or he was checking it out." And she couldn't make it, <laughs> so oh, okay. luckily she was busy because I don't know I don't know if he would have called me after that, you know. Yeah. So, but 
but luckily she couldn't make it. And so then <laughs> she called me. So that was how, and then Zoo had started right then. You know, it was a different version of the band than it is now, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think our first gig was either in 99 or maybe in 2000. Um, but that's why, that's why you ended on acoustic also with Henry or because that's of what, the That's what he wanted, you know. Oh, wow. He had an idea of it being this all acoustic band, which I thought was funny because as soon as we started rehearsing, everybody had amps, even though we were acoustic, because we had to play with drums, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so even from the very beginning, I was like, well, at this point, you know, we have amps. It's, it's an electric band, you know, like, but... But I understand, you know, I, I came to really appreciate and understand what he was going for because in Make a Move, you know, he had Stoma was playing electric bass and Brandon was playing yeah. electric guitar and there was a certain kind of sound. And as a composer, he wanted a more chamber music sound, even though it had to be amplified, he still wanted yeah. it to sound more acoustic. So, so that was his thing, you know, so, uh, yeah. so yeah. So it, and it a, it's a fun adventure because I developed a, I developed a sound and a technique. Yeah that band that I wouldn't have otherwise, you know, so, yeah. so that it's kind of, you know, I appreciate that now. And what's really funny is that I've gotten so many calls over the years to play acoustic in that way because of being in Zooid, you know, Oh wow. That's it's really funny because sometimes I'll be in those situations and I'll, and I'll be like, you know, the music you're writing and the way we're playing, you should just let me play electric guitar. I'll be able to do so much more, yeah. <laughs> play more information. You know, I can, comp differently and i can do all yeah. this thing. stuff with the guitar acoustic guitar being that loud doesn't always work henry's writing it works you know because of the yeah. way it works like for example the, you know in henry's music it's very rare that i'm playing a full chord of anything you know i might be playing yeah. two notes, yeah like intervals more yeah yeah you know so but when yeah. you play a full you know if i'm playing a five note chord or a four note yeah. chord, holding it out and you want me to hold that and we're playing it loud volume you're going to get feedback yeah, you know, and it, I mean, it can work. Obviously, I, I, you know, people have figured out how to do it, but it's just it's not always the most comfortable either, you know. So even after twenty years of doing it, I still am like, just let me play electric. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. but I'm, did, did you, I'm kind of joking. I'm kind of joking, but like, no, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, but yeah. but did, did you, you? You obviously studied before Henry's music, like, or what did his? You, you know, I, I never saw Henry's lead sheets or how it looks like. I, I tried to figure it out on my own by listening to what I know. I know, just but uh, you, you know, I've read about it that this it's in this interval idea that you get, and I try to figure it out, but I, I can't. And I, it's really hard to figure out where the limit is between improvisation and uh, written out stuff. And I wanted to ask you that how, how do you, as a guitar player in that band, well, at first, oh, that, or how is music the music written like really shortly because it's probably like for two hours a talk about this but well you know at first i didn't know what to do when we first started rehearsing the very first couple of rehearsals i was just like what's happening and when he gave me the music um the first thing to know uh is like he gave me the parts to, to practice before we rehearsed which was good and then i looked at it and i didn't really know what i was looking at and so I practiced it, but what it turns out was it was like most of it was guitar parts, right? So like it's kind of like chamber music where yeah, here's your part, and I don't see what everyone else is doing, you know. And then much later he would also give you the score, so then you could actually see what everybody's doing. The other ones. Yeah. But once we started rehearsing, I started hearing all the parts, and I was like, oh wow, I get it. Okay, you know, this is it's this chambery <laughs> counterpoint thing and we're all we all have an interlocking part to play and somebody will be doubling with someone else usually some kind of rhythm or or you'll double the melody you know so sometimes mm -hmm. the melody with henry yeah but, but but he spreads the melodies out so everyone gets a chance playing melodies and but when it comes to the forms um and this is something that that i share with him <laughs> and influenced by him yeah is that the forms are always different you know there's no stock form you know, we certainly don't work with AABA kind of thing. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. No laws about forms. Um, and some people get frustrated with that because they can't understand what's happening. And so uh, the simplest way to describe what we're doing in Zooid is that um, the harmony is based off of his interval system. And yeah. so it basically, most of the time, it's some kind of a three-note chord. 
and the, the, the notes from the chords, in terms of just the harmony, are moving a chord to his interval system. So, uh, you know, there might be a collection of intervals um, that are all based on a certain chord that he starts writing. Mm -hmm. And it could be like there's a minor second and a minor third and a fifth or something like that. And so then you try, you have to move in the counterpoint only by those intervals when you're playing the harmony, oh, wow. while you're playing the harmony, right? So wow. that shapes the feeling of the, of the sound. So it's a different, you know. Oh, uh, how cool, man. That's... It's a different kind of way of looking at harmony, you know. Um, and so it's a system that he, that he created for himself, which is great, and it works. Yeah. It also means that the harmony can sound mysterious. But it totally makes sense when you're inside of it. But when you're listening to it, you're not going to be able to identify the chords and write down the chords because yeah. it's just pitches that you could write down. And every once in a while, there might be a minor or a diminished sound or something, but but it's they're not defined by that. It's defined by the intervals, you know. Okay. So oh. and then, but if you want to figure it out, you know, what you should do is you listen to one part, uh, maybe the tuba or the cello part or something. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. Figure out when it's repeating. So the first yeah. mystery to crack is there's always a section that's going to repeat, unless there's not. <laughs> but <laughs> more often than not, if there's a solo happening or something, there is a section repeating. Right? I figured that out. Yeah. So <laughs> so you you hear the bass line moving and you feel okay. There's this many beats happening and it's repeating. You know. So yeah. if you can figure out one note, then listen to whoever else is not soloing at the time, and then you try to pick those notes out and see if you can line up the time, and you might yeah. be. You might eventually be able to find the harmony, but here's the thing. So if you're if if you're improvising, if if you were improvising and I was playing the accompaniment, so say Henry's taking a solo, and I'm playing and I'm moving by those intervals, but at the same time I'm also improvising as well. On the form on this form, yeah, kind of. Because yeah. we're comping. It's just like jazz, you know, like you're yeah. not the same sure. wow. every time. So and you might play inside or outside. So it makes it even more mysterious because That's as a company, I'm moving, I'm staying to the rules, but then I'm also breaking the rules. Yeah. So trying to transcribe it, it would be hard to pick out what's happening. And the thing is, depending on what the piece is or what the mood is of the piece, um, we might be instantly going into like, okay, just full out. We're going to start the piece with an improvisation on this section and just as if we've been playing all along. Yeah. So, you know, so we're yeah. all, how can you transcribe that? And so the, yeah. the written part of the piece might not come for five minutes, you know, and then that's when we play the actual head. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I it, it, so, so, you know, so it's always moving like that. But what I will say is that 99% of the time, everything we're playing is a part of a form, just like a jazz piece where, yeah. where there's, there's a part of the form that's happening and we're interacting with the form. It's not free. It's not all improvised. You yeah, know, it's like a yeah. piece of playing it. And so wow. uh, it's just a matter of the way the form works and the way the harmony works, again, that makes it mysterious, which could camouflage what's happening. But, yeah. but, um, but I often would get funny, like some really respected musician would come up to me and say, so is that all improvised? And I'd be like, are you kidding me? What are you talking <laughs> about? Did you say that? You know, like, can't you hear there's so much happening? Like, yeah. yeah. You know? But <laughs> but, but you know, uh, if you're not inside of that language, yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, it's, you can't just pick it up from going to the gig and be like, "Oh yeah, I get it." You know. No, yeah, it's so, listening can listen you can. But yeah. did, did you need like needed the? Did you need a long time to? Did you practice like on your own also for a long time to get the idea of, or? Well, um, it's not. It wasn't practicing alone. I mean, practicing alone <clears throat> did help in terms of learning the intervals and everything. But, yeah. but that it really is doing. It's just like anything. It's a you know doing the gigs mm -hmm. and rehearsing. That's where. That's where I developed my own vocabulary, like in terms of performing his music. Yeah, it's a kind of language that I use in his music that I don't necessarily. I mean, it does work its way into other parts of my music life but yeah. in, there's a certain way i play in his band and i think it's funny sometimes people won't hire me because they want me to do that but i said don't you understand it's henry's music that's making that happen <laughs> yeah. yeah i can't just do that in your band you know like like your music isn't that music and i can't yeah. it's like you should be able to understand that i can't play that way in your band 
sometimes people get that and sometimes they do write music that does work in a similar way but yeah. again but the the one way it does work is that um over the tw i've had 20 years of playing in this band so it's like uh that's incredible there is a intuitive sound that has entered my lexicon you know of improv yeah. um material yeah that is always yeah. going to be there so like there's a certain amount of that that i can bring and that and also it's allowed me a lot of freedom playing in henry's music because that's i can now play more by ear in his yeah music. okay but i'm taken yeah, a very sense. long time like like uh i would say uh 10 years of playing his music <laughs> to get to yeah, that yeah, no. You know what I mean? Because it's just it's just like anything jazzy that you would play totally sounds cliche. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, if I was playing and I was sort of playing licks or something terrible, you know, that just didn't work at all. And so it was like, wow, I have to kind of throw out a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, that's like music because it doesn't serve the purpose of this music. You know, that's actually so so good. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's incredible. And I remember talking to somebody. Um, Marcus Rojas, uh, one of the tuba players. The tuba player, yeah. And I remember him, he said something about, um, he's like, yeah, you know, when you play with Henry, you really have to buy into it. You have to, you have to really believe in it. Uh, yeah. Because of the amount of work it takes <laughs> to play that music, to, to make yourself feel natural and to, to mm -hmm. deal. You know, we also do a ton of rehearsing, which is about building a band sound and, and also just, yeah. to, just to execute the music. You know, you have to rehearse. And um, and not you know a lot of busy New York musicians don't necessarily instantly decide okay I'm going to commit all this time to this yeah because everybody's doing so many different things so that's part of Henry's um, band leading uh, mastery I guess is yeah you know picking different people and seeing if it's working and then getting you and then getting you to buy in and and say okay I I do yeah. I believe in this process, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's not like Hermeto Pascal, where we all live on a on a. But yeah, you have to sort of give. You have to be willing to give. Yeah, know, uh, that, to give your time and energy. That's why it sounds like original as it sounds. Yeah. Yeah, there's no the, other way to do it. You yeah, know? yeah. It's not the kind of music you can just rehearse and play a gig. You know. It's just, no, it's definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, Liberty, about some other collaboration you did. Like, with, I love this band by Meyer Melford, Snowy oh, Grat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, I played with Taishan a little years ago, and I love Taishan, and, you know, Ron Miles, he's amazing. Uh, how did you get involved into this group? Where, where, when, when did you meet Myra? So, well, that was, again, it's it's like uh, Myra had come to see Zuid. Um, uh -huh. she she got she's been teaching at uc berkeley so here in the bay area and yeah. we played uh zoo had played at sf jazz in san francisco mm -hmm. and he came to the concert um but she um she you know she worked with henry uh many years ago yeah um, maybe 30 years ago or more i don't know and so she would of course want to see henry but also she had been working with stomo takeshi who who played with Henry also, right? So yeah, exactly. she w was thinking about putting together a new band, and Stomo uh, was playing in Zuid at the time, and uh, and so he suggested to her to check me out, you know, because he, he was like, oh well, you know, you should check out Liberty. It's very interesting and different, and I think with the kind of band you're talking about, it would really work. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how that's what happened. She came to the show and she enjoyed it, and then we talked. And then she reached out to me after that and said, "Hey, you know, do you want to try this?" And um, and that was that. You know, we had a good, we had really good chemistry, and uh, and I really enjoy the, the personalities in that band because yeah, yeah, Sean of course is a genius, and um, you know he hasn't uh, he didn't do the last couple tours we did because he's got he's just become too busy. You know, like he's so yeah, busy and he's teaching at Wesleyan. Yeah, and he um, he he's already gotten to the point. It's like where well, he doesn't want to travel so much. I mean, the whole pandemic has changed everyone's life. <laughs> yeah, before that, he was just like, I don't think I want to go on the road so much. I just want to teach and do just very little things, you know. And the, the actually, we had been playing with Joe Lovano um, a couple of gigs, and there was supposed to be more that got canceled after this. Yeah, you know, 
but uh, that but I hadn't seen him. So Gerald Cleaver uh, oh, yeah. and Rudy Royston, Rudy Royston had also been playing. Do you know? Oh, Rudy? oh really? Yeah, yeah, sure. I I played with Gerald. We played. Uh, some of you, Gret had a gig at Lincoln Center, and we played one night with Tyshawn, and then the next night Rudy Royston played. And oh, we, wow. And and I was worried, you know, because it's so hard. You can't replace Tyshawn. I mean, he's so yeah. young, and he's such a genius. And you know, if you have Tyshawn in your band, like that is a sound you'll never have with anyone else. But I was relieved because when Rudy played, it was wonderful, you know, and it was like every everything that he did to make the pieces unique. Uh, he did it in his way, and good, yeah. uh, and it was really great. So I was like, "Oh wow, okay, good." You know, like it, it's like yeah. it's, it's different than Taishan, but it's not worse. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing. Like, you always wonder, like, if you don't have Taishan, like, can this even work anymore? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, it's not fair to other drummers, you know. But yeah. actually, actually, Rudy is fabulous, and so um, what's happening here? So I. Um, uh i really dig it with rudy and i um so i don't know i guess i think rudy i think as far as my was concerned rudy is going to now be playing drums in that band but in oh. any case um I, in any case uh ron is this painterly kind of sage yeah you know, it's it's like very beautiful, melodic, lyrical. Yeah. Um, it's not a chop thing, you know, and it's a very refreshing approach um, right now, considering that the, a lot of players right now are so focused on chops, you know. And, yeah. And Ron is really focused on melody, and and um, and so that's a it was a beautiful sound that I love to interact with, and Myra writes very lyrical music, so. Um, you know, she has a little bit of quirky things that yeah, coming it's still up. complex. Well, she comes like very lyrical, right? Like, like in that early knitting factory Zorn time, and <laughs> and work Henry a little bit. Like she's, you know, she's very curious compositionally. But um, so there, there is complex. There, there are complex things. But but um, I think maybe she and I have that in common too, where that you know that's one part of the music. But then there's this whole all this other stuff. That she's not shy about, um, yeah. you know, being influenced by poetry and dancing yeah. and all other stuff, and so, and so it's a good mix, you know, um, both intellectually and emotionally, the band and the way it yeah. works. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, she's what she shares with people like Henry is I'm finding people that I want to play with and I like what they do, and so I'm going to write in a way that they can have their yeah. personality and contribute to the sound of the band and i'm also going to get my compositional ideas across you know yeah. and i think that in improv improvisational music that's the that's a winning way to always think about your band and not yeah. the music doesn't necessarily only exist without the musicians you know yeah although it can you know sometimes sometimes a good melody is a good melody and you and anyone can play it um you know, you can't deny that. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But to make to, but to make a jazz group interesting, you have to draw on everybody's strengths and and sort of create this thing and and then insert the, the compositional your perspective into that. But, yeah. But trust your band to 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 make it better. You know, and and yeah. that's so and that's, so that's you know that's what she does very well takes a lot of time yeah, yeah. and yeah. sacrifice and yeah. yeah she also has this it's also really fun to play with her because she she has this really um uh, uh special kind of she she has really cool harmony stuff and you can hear all these things that she's practiced and a genuine love for the jazz music but then <laughs> but then she can also go totally in the cecil taylor <laughs> Just, yeah. All of a sudden, you're like, "Where's all this energy coming out of this big, small woman?" You know, like, yeah, yeah. Alan, you know, and and uh, and it's wonderful. It's just, it's very fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know, but but yeah, again, it was just like, I'll, I'll get. I'm going to go back to my friend Brian Bacchus and tell say that because because he hooked me up with Henry. That's why I hooked up with Myra because I yeah, that's so, so funny, right? One taxi ride. Or... It goes back to Brian and the fact that. Or it goes back to my friend Monica, who got me the job at Blue Note. Let's say that because that was where I met Brian. You know, yeah, incredible. Man. <laughs> it comes out. I did, it, yeah, 
it's it's just I just wanted to ask you, like, not to take too much of your time. Like, you're so wide. Like you said, you know, you come from so many different. I, I hear that, and when you talk about music, like, uh, I just want to ask you about two more things. Like, first one is like, I love this. Uh, what you do with Somi, this singer, oh. uh -huh. and this uh -huh. this is incredible because it's like you know, Anjali Kijo meets Erika Badu with some African. Uh, you know, you know what? The, that record, if the rain, the rains come first. I love that stuff. You know. I just wanted to ask you, how did you get involved into this? Because it's like something completely on the other okay. side of... I'll tell you how. Brian Bacchus. <laughs> <laughs> <I guess. laughs> Again? Brian, so Brian, Brian, um, see, Brian, I got to say, so Brian had a, uh, he had a little production company called Soul Feast, and it was a dance music thing. And it was a DJ, a very famous house DJ named DJ... Joe Classell. Okay. And I ended up working with him. Joe Classell, I ended up working with uh, for a few years, and I was producing tracks with him and doing engineering and playing guitar. And so there are some dance tracks out there that I collaborated with him on and a lot of okay. remixes. And Somi had done a record and she wanted to do a dance remix. And somehow, she, I don't know how she met Brian, but somehow she met Brian. And he said, Oh, let's do like a Soul Feast thing with DJ Classell. And brought me in on that, so okay. or uh, so it was either one of her pieces or she was singing on one of Joe's pieces. I can't, it was one or the other, but somehow the two okay. of us ended up at Joe Cassell's studio together. And so then um, she had another guy, Hervé Sam, who's a really interesting guitar player. Also, um, he was originally working with her, um, and he was based in Paris. But um, this was like two thousand and one or two something like that. And so he, but he was living in Paris and she was in New York and it was becoming difficult uh, to maintain that. And so uh, because we had already met and then I think maybe she said, Brian, do you think Liberty could do this? And he's like, Oh, definitely. You know? So then I was, so that was that. So Brian, you know, hooked that up. And then, you know, I had always been, see, I came up playing guitar, right? So it's like, yeah. you know, before I really, studied a lot of jazz i was playing blues and rock and other things and you know my parents were musicians and they um had a really great music collection i mean did, did you did like all the rock stuff as well like jimmy page and hendrix and stuff and yeah yeah oh wow that's so cool man. i know so but the thing is like um so and also before even before all that when i i because i lived in the bay area before so yeah. I was in New York and then I moved out here with my mother like in 1980 or something. And then, so when I was a teenager, I was here and I was listening to all kinds of blues and rock and, and even African music and different things. But then also when you're in the Bay Area uh, where I started playing for real, you it's a small scene. It's not like New York. Like in New York, it's such a big music scene. You can get yeah. into one click and just stay there and that's all you do, you know? Yeah. Bay Area, there wasn't, quite as much work like that, you know? And also playing guitar, it's such a versatile instrument. I would play, I was in a hip hop band, you know? Oh, wow, well, that's cool. I man. played reggae band. I played- Reggae, jazz. me too. <laughs> yeah, I played jazz bass, And it was like, in each world was so different, you know? It was like, whoa, but the thing is, you know, guitar is a rhythm instrument and I really yeah. love playing rhythms. And so like, I don't have a problem. It's like, yeah, I can play this reggae rhythm all night. You know, I mean, I didn't do it. Yeah. I didn't go on the road a lot with that, but I did, you know, I did some of those gigs. And That's so when cool. I was but, uh, one, one incredible singer I played with while I was out here, her name is Lettucey Young, or she goes by Lettucey, but she's pretty famous now. And so I was in her band for a few years and we were playing R&B and it was just like, she's one wow. of the best R&B singers I ever heard, bar none. And um, so by the time I got to New York, I had, I had a lot of experience actually doing all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I had been listening to Ali Farka tour, yeah, 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 and King Sunny a Day and people like that. So I, so you know, I, I had an interest in Congolese music. Like I, I had already been out African music, and in her band, you know, there's a there is an element of that that she wants, but it's yeah. more it's a combination. So actually, I think I had the perfect background, or she thought so anyway. You know, <laughs> so so oh, I you fit you yeah. I, you blend amazingly. Yeah. I had a little bit of, of experience playing in an Afro 
diasporic type of traditions, yeah. types of African music, and um, and complicated rhythms. Obviously, I've already had experience with that, but then also working with singers was not new for me. And so that's a, you know, it's a it's a different world. You know, it's more about you play the song and the singers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I and, love it, man. You know, but Sami, it's cool because playing live and everything. I mean, she gives you you get you get plenty of space. To, there's a lot of guitar playing that kind of music. I, it's, you're also in the live band, also. I mean, like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, how cool. I didn't know that. Okay. So it's very different, though. I mean, it's, you yeah. know, it's like a parallel universe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's so but cool. I love it. It's a different way of expressing and playing music. And, and um, so, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way to work on presenting songs with somebody, you know. Yeah, uh, definitely. So... Oh, that's so cool. And also, yeah, you know, like you, you, you got to keep busy. You know, it's like there's a lot yeah. of guitarists out there, and there's a lot there's a lot of guitar players, and there's not as many gigs, and so it's like it, it's good to have these different relationships and these yeah. different types of places to go and play. You know, so yeah, um, yeah definitely. So it's yeah. also about being staying busy. You know, <laughs> yeah. Being now, open speaking of me. speaking of busy, I, I just wanted to ask you this one, one last thing: is like. I, I can't believe how many records you mixed and mastered, actually, yeah. also. Yeah. Like, also, at home, I have so many records. Like, uh, I just wanted to ask you, when did you start doing this? Like, as, I started doing how did that. this happen? I started doing that in college. I had um, a roommate, actually, someone I went to high school with, um, which is, like, you know, I've known him since, uh, since I was, like, 13 years old or something, you know? My yeah. friend... Greg, who was my roommate when we were in, in college, and we st we put a studio together in our apartment. We had an eight track reel to reel, wow. like like a Yamaha DX7 and a Quadroverb, and then like oh. our amps and a couple other keyboards. And we would write songs and record, and had a few microphones. and And, and I just really oh. enjoyed the process. It was really fun. I always liked gear, you know, guitar players like gear. But I always yeah. liked <laughs> we had a mixer, you know, a Tascam mixer and all this stuff. Yeah, and so. Yeah. so I really liked it, and uh, so I. Ever since then, after that, I got my first computer. Like I had um, an Atari based. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so when I moved into another apartment by myself, uh, or with different, you know, after we weren't living together, I start. I put together my own thing that was based around samplers and this Atari, and I was able to do simple things. And I, I was also, and at that time, I was also working with the hip hop band. So I was producing some tracks, even for the hip hop tracks. Oh wow, it. that's amazing! So you know, um, there's this whole other thing that was happening. So then, when I came to New York, I mean, obviously I came to play guitar, but I still had all my gear, and so I, I, I used, I was using it to write music and also to make tracks. But then I had already made a record and and uh, the orthodoxy record, and then I was yeah, like, yeah, another one. Yeah. And then I was like, um never really had the budget that you know like i had the production taste that i wanted to do stuff but i never had the money to spend that kind of time in the studio and when and, I, and with the other bands especially the more like pop or hip-hop or whoever bands i'm working with you know you would spend three weeks or a month in the studio you know and somebody yeah, that's would, amazing i mean the costs were also lower but there was still a lot more money than a jazz record would take so so i realized early on like i want to have more control over that you know i want to be able to mix my music and tactiles i didn't mix but and i liked i liked the way uh we mix tactiles but then after that i was like mm -hmm. i said the next time i'm gonna mix my own record and i'm gonna so do you mix your own records as well right yeah yeah, 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 because I love the stuff. It's like you know, I listen to the headphones and studio speakers. So then you, there's like this panning happening and some sounds, yeah, no, I mean, and I love the stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I like to, I like to bring that part of it. You know, it's just yeah. fun, and you know, I like I like the sound of it. You know, but but um, but so anyway, so I started mixing my own music, and then and then that was it. You know, once I started doing that, there were other people, you know, who wanted me to do it, and then um, it just became that word of mouth. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Great thing because um, all of my clients that I work with, um, because we know each other on the scene, or it's somebody who's heard my work, either heard my records or heard, you know, I've mixed all, of the, well, most, pretty much all of the Zooid records after a certain point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And mastered a bunch of records. And so, like, people hear that and then they, you know, so then I would start getting people calling me that I don't That's know. That's beautiful. Hey, I heard, yeah. I like the sound of this and can we do it? And 
so yeah, it was just it's natural, you know. Like I never yeah. intended to be a commercial type of person where I wanted to mix, you know, because there are people who that's their job, and then they have to mix anything that comes through their door. Yeah, sure. And so lucky for me, it's like all of the music that I get to work on, or, you know, I would say ninety nine percent of it. It's really creative and yeah. Yeah. jazz music that I really like, and so yeah. you know fun for me like i really enjoy the process i like working with these people and i really like their music so it's yeah it's a and, and and it kept me from doing you know i'd much rather be doing that and being home than out doing gigs that i don't want to do you know yeah. you know definitely. what i mean so yeah definitely yeah. That's way, like i only do gigs that i want to do and then that's perfect do this you know now i mean obviously i don't know what's going to happen at this point because you know we're out here now and I, you know i intend to go back to new york uh next year or at some point but you know it's mm -hmm. hard for kids and they're here in school now so it's like i don't know if i'll be able to move my studio back there or yeah. just go back and forth and use somebody else's studio when i'm working in new york and be based here i'm not sure what's going to happen with all that so yeah and i don't know when i'm going to be touring again you know i, I don't know when yeah it's... and so so it's all up in the air but but i can only tell you what's happened before yeah sure definitely <laughs> that's so cool man. so yeah but 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 i but i i've actually i mean i'm still setting this room up now so it's it's not but like i don't know well yeah, yeah. oh right, yeah it, but uh you know like yeah. i've got wow like, that's beautiful stuff is here right so like, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm still plugging it all in but i certainly intend on working working here as much as possible you know so yeah. Hawker Jazz.